In this video, we'll introduce the new Sanvik Coromant Coro Plus Tool Library Add-in for Fusion 360's manufacturing workspace. We'll provide a step-by-step -step guide to installing it, using it, and explain how you can use the add-in to reduce the time and effort needed to define cutting tool assemblies and identify the best cutting parameters. One of the most time consuming tasks in the manufacturing process is flicking through tooling catalogues to find the perfect tool for the job. Different materials, different geometry, different machine power and torque and maximum spindle speed are just some of the variables to consider when selecting the cutting tool. With hundreds of pages in the catalogues, this can be a time consuming task. The Coroplus Tool Library add-in works within Fusion 360's manufacturing workspace and is designed to streamline this process. The key variables are selected and the add-in will provide a list of tools and holders as well as suggesting appropriate cutting data, all of which can be automatically transferred into Fusion 360 with the click of a button. First, we want to install the Coroplus Tool Library add-in. We start by downloading the add-in from the Autodesk App Store. There's a link in the description below that you can use to download the add-in too. Once we're in the App Store, we can select the appropriate operating system, then select Download. Once the add-in has downloaded, we can start the installation process. Once the add-in has installed, we can start Fusion 360 and go into the manufacturing workspace. Now we select Utilities on the ribbon and choose Scripts and Add-ins. Now we select the My Add-ins option and double click the Coro Plus add-in. Under Utilities, you should now see a new button called Coro Plus which looks like this. We select this new icon to launch the new Coro Plus interface. The add-in provides a portal into the CoroPlus tool library. To use the library, we need to log into a Sanvit Coromant account. If you don't already have an account, you can access a free trial here or use the dialog to sign up for an account. If you already have an account, enter your login details here. Remember, these aren't the same details used to access your Fusion 360 account. Now we've got the initial setup done, we can get into the technicalities of how the CoroPlus tool library works. In order for the add-in to work correctly, we need to set up something called machine mapping. This creates a link between the machine definition inside the add-in and the equivalent machine definition inside of Fusion 360. The mapping process will identify characteristics between the two machines to ensure the CoroPlus tool library has all the machine information necessary to make the appropriate tooling recommendations. Once we've selected add new mapping, we need to select a Fusion 360 machine and a CoroPlus machine. When selecting our CoroPlus machine, we can choose one from the library or we can choose to use the machine editor to create our own. In the CoroPlus machine definition, we must enter our machine variables. This includes maximum spindle speed, maximum feed rate, coolant type, etc. Once we've created and selected our CoroPlus machine, we must also select the equivalent Fusion 360 machine. Meaning whenever we select this Fusion 360 machine in the future, it will be automatically associated with the CoroPlus machine. Now, the machine mapping is complete. Let's look at how we can use the add-in as part of a Fusion 360 machining setup. Within the Fusion 360 setup dialog, it is important that we select the Fusion 360 machine we just mapped to CoroPlus. In the stock tab, we select the material we're machining. This is a vital variable in tooling and cutting data. In this case, I'll pick a grade of titanium. More specifically, 6AL, Dash 4V. The CoroPlus add-in will use this to determine the tool itself and cutting data and parameters such as speeds, feeds, step over and step down. Now our setup is complete, 
let's continue by machining this rectangular pocket. We'll use adaptive clearing to rough machine the feature. Once in the strategy, instead of defining the tool geometry in the normal way, we'll select Get Tool Recommendation to access the Cora Plus add-in. Once we're in here, we need to make some selections regarding our geometry to make the Cora Plus tool library aware of our intent. In this case, it's a non-rotating workpiece. Our geometry is a pocket. It's rectangular. And it's being machined from solid. Next, we want to define the parameters of our feature. In this case, we need to define the depth, width, length, and radius. Note we can minimize the library at this point if we need to use the inspect command to measure the feature. In this case, we'll measure the width of the pocket and enter this and then the other dimensions into the Coro Plus tool library. One important point to note here, we need to activate the dynamic milling option inside the add-in to ensure it provides the recommended cutting data to suit the Fusion 360 adaptive style of machining. Once we've input all the relevant data, the Cora Plus tool library will recommend the best tool for the job based on overall cost and machining cycle time. We can go to the alternative tab and have a deeper look into other tools that could be used. We can also filter via different parameters such as type. For example, we may only be interested in solid carbide tooling. If this is the case, we can filter the rest out. If we go to the solution board, we have a more comprehensive breakdown of the recommended cutting data. This displays additional information such as cutting speed, feed per tooth, axial engagement, depth of cut, and more. Now we're happy with the cutting tool, we can build the rest of the tool assembly. We start by clicking Build Tool Assembly on the Overview tab. A new interface appears that allows us to choose different collets and tool holder elements. The add-in displays a visual representation of what our tool assembly will look like. We continue to build the assembly using the component hierarchy part of the interface. Once we've built the tool up, we must give it a name. Let's call this Adaptive Pocket Roughing Tool. Finally, we can click Center Fusion 360 and the tool is chosen for the operation. This loads the tool geometry and cutting data. We can now see that the recommended cutting data has been loaded into the machining operation inside Fusion 360. We can make any further adjustments to the toolpath at this point before clicking OK to generate. There's a good chance we will want to use the same tool again but for a different kind of feature. If this is the case, we don't need to select or redefine the cutting tool geometry. We simply select the previous tool assembly, then choose Get Cutting Data and repeat the same process as before to define the feature type and get the recommended cutting data. Once we've done this, Fusion 360 will give us specific cutting data relevant to the new geometry being machined. In this video, we have seen how to download, install, and use the new Sanvit Coromant Coro Plus tool library add-in for Fusion 360 to reduce the time and effort needed to define cutting tool assemblies and choose the optimum cutting parameters for our machine and component features. If you want to learn more about any of the topics covered in this video, please use the links in the description below. Thanks for watching the video and see you next time.